Thanks for joining us on Shannon's Club TV, where we look back on classic Australian road and race car memories. You can join the conversation with other members on the Shannon's Club website, where you'll also find a huge selection of previous episodes. Now, still to come, we'll meet a proud owner of our feature car, and we get some market advice from the Shannon's auctions team. Right now, though, let's take a look at the Aussie Fords, which ensured a dignified demise for the great Australian road car, the FG and FGX Falcons. The Falcon Road, a rising trajectory from the spectacular days of the XP durability run in April 1965 through the Mustang bred XR, the great Australian road car XB in 1973 and all the way up to the EL, before entering what would prove to be a terminal decline beginning with the sadly underrated AU. By the time Ford Australia launched its FG Falcon in May 2008, even the most ardent Ford fan probably realised that no matter how good the new model was, it was unlikely to outsell the VE Commodore. The FG's overly conservative styling distracted prospective customers from the extensive range of important changes that the engineers had introduced. These included, but were not limited to, sharper steering with a tighter turning circle, a more spacious interior with much improved ingress and egress, improved NVH, and a new five-speed French-made automatic on the entry-level XT variant. Mark, the FG was probably more equal on the racetrack than it was in the showroom. Yeah, yeah, it sure was. I mean, a lot of work by Ford and its top race teams went into development of the FG Falcon for V8 supercar racing. It was effectively an evolution of the BF, which in itself was a very successful race car. So, you know, the FG was more than a match for the VE Commodore and the VF Commodore, which I'll get to a bit later. For the first time in memory, rear seat occupants needed no special athletic talents to squeeze themselves into and out of the back seat. The A-pillars had a less fast angle, a new and much more elegant steering wheel was fitted across the range, although the seating position was still too high. The model range was rationalised, though less than it should have been. Finally, the dated Futura nameplate disappeared, along with Fairmont and Fairmont Gear. Fairlane and LTD had already gone. There were four non-XR variants, the entry-level XT, the luxury G6 and G6E, and the G6E Turbo Plus XR6, XR6 Turbo, and XR8. There was a new ute, but the wagon disappeared. The brilliant four-cylinder EcoBoost and dedicated gas models sold in minuscule numbers. The 270 kilowatt G6E Turbo was the standout, almost an Aussie BMW. The FPV GT used an essentially hand-built V8 engine. In 2014 came the brilliantly facelifted FGX with updated connectivity. It could automatically dial triple O in the event of a crash but it was Ford Australia that needed emergency assistance. In March 2016, the limited edition 325kilowatt XR6 and 345kilowatt XR8 Sprint variants sold out almost immediately. What an irony, given the demise of the Falcon itself. Mm. Mark, it was a terrible anticlimax, wasn't it? It really was, you know, given the massive contribution that Falcon made to Aussie motoring history. But on the racetrack, it continued to thrill the fans right to the end. The Aussie Falcon boasts a proud racing heritage spanning almost seven decades. However, its 25-year evolution during the V8 supercar era with the category's emphasis on maintaining performance parity amongst rival brands, resulted in the FG and final FGX retaining the least showroom links of all racing Falcons. The increasing use of shared parts, known as control components, kicked two major goals for the category in keeping the competition even and reducing costs. However, by the time the Falcon was retired in 2018, its links with the showroom product were purely visual, courtesy of its external panels only. Even so, the FG was immediately competitive with the VE Commodore when it debuted in 2009, 
setting the stage for another thrilling season-long battle between Ford and Holden. Jamie Wincup and Triple Eight Race Engineering secured a second driver's title and first for the FG Falcon in a dream debut. John, you know, not even that success in V8 supercar racing could save Falcon, could it? No, well, it, it couldn't. Mm. Uh, I think one of the issues was that discerning race watchers understood that there was almost no relationship between the cars on the racetrack and the cars they buy in the showroom. Indeed. I think that yeah. was part of it. What I think was really a kind of a dumbing down of, mm. of touring car racing in Australia. So that didn't help. Mm. But apart from anything, customers just basically weren't even shopping the Falcon. Mm. Didn't matter how good it was. I remember someone telling me, I'm not sure whether it's true or not, but Ford doing their own research out at V8 supercar meetings and following groups of Ford fans back to the car park at the end of the race meeting. They were all dressed in blue, waving all their blue ovals, but they were going to Toyotas, they were going to Hyundais, they were going to all these different cars. So even though they were at the track cheering on it's Ford, pretty much, it wasn't following through to the showroom. No. Interesting, wasn't in, it? Indeed. Yeah. The FG Falcon narrowly won a second V8 supercar championship in 2010, thanks to Dick Johnson Racing and the dogged consistency of James Courtney, who had to wait until the final round at Homebush in Sydney to claim his first driver's title. The introduction of Car of the Future rules in 2013 required all cars to adopt a common chassis and more control parts. Even so, the FG remained competitive under the new rules and scored back-to-back -back Bathurst wins with Ford Performance Racing in 2013 and 14. The last Falcon V8 supercar, the FGX, arrived in 2015 and with its aggressive new grille and aerodynamics proved a worthy successor to the FG, with Mark Winterbottom winning his and FPR's first long-awaited championship. Scott McLaughlin came oh so close to doing the same in 2017 for DJR Penske before winning the 2018 championship and giving the Falcon a fairy tale finale. And with that, the end of the Aussie Falcon's incredible near seven decade touring car career, which started with a complete showroom offering in 1960 and finished, literally, as a mere shell of its former self. Even so, it leaves an unmatched and indelible racing legacy. Remember to join the Shannons Club, where you can connect with other enthusiasts around the country. I'm Andrew Phillips, and this is my 2016 XR8 Falcon Sprint. I bought the car brand new in 2016. The car was mint because it drove off the showroom floor. Uh, and all I've done is just dust it. It's uh, auto, power steering, air conditioning. This is uh, number 476, so it's, it's up there. It's one of the last ones that uh, has come off. My favourite feature would be the uh, transmission and the uh, supercharged V8. It's just so smooth. When I first hopped in the car and went for a drive, uh, just to smell that nice new leather and the new carpet, it handles really well. The Sprint is a lot more refined and a lot nicer to ride in. My father always loved Fords and we always uh, sat and watched Bathurst together. Uh, and I remember watching the 1-2 uh, finish in 1977. A little bit upset because uh, my grandchildren won't get to see the Falcons race at Bathurst and get to follow uh, Ford through school like I did when I was younger. I've been with Shannons for many, many years now since I bought my first Falcon uh, and they've been great to deal with. I've got a uh, 1926 Model T uh, Ford, so I've got one of the first cars to be built and now I've got one of the last cars. I'd like to uh, keep all my Fords, all my Falcons, uh, but particularly like to hand this one down to my son uh, in years to come. Shannon's National Auctions Manager Chris Borobon joins us with some expert advice on the FG and FGX Falcon. Welcome, mate. Hey, Mark. How are you, John? G'day. Um, 
This is a big range of cars. Yeah, we haven't yeah. got time to cover them all. So, you know, what are the highlights? There was a big change there. I remember they went from uh, Futura and Fairmont would drop, yeah. and then it was G6, G6E, and G6E Turbo. Turbo, yep. Now, uh, I think John made a comment, you know, a very BMW style, that G6E Turbo, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. it, it was. It was a very sophisticated car, and people, I think, are becoming mm. to appreciate now what a brilliant turbocharged Turbo six cylinder engine. engine. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, we see that in today's market. There's a really big following for, for the Barrett turbo yeah. motor, as it's called. And, mm. uh, uh, you know, we see it in standard form, but it's also very accepted to be modified. And they, they get some big horsepowers out of, out of those motors. So uh, it's very well followed. So is this a rare kind of case where the six cylinder turbo is almost as sought after as one of the high performance V8s? In, uh, given nearly, it, it, yeah, it nearly is. It, it's very well accepted, and and I, and I think uh, you know it, it's hard to say. It, sometimes you'll find people. I'll say, well, I'll I'll get the, the turbo, the XR6 turbo over the the eight. So de definitely, it's probably one of those cases. And you know, in the FG, we saw two very clearly defined streams, particularly in the Ford Performance vehicle range, where you had the yep. Turbo Six fans and the the V8 fans. So, in terms of collectability, any of those uh, FPV models from that era? Look, look, I think uh, m most of those FPV models are sought after. Again, you know, if the cars had the right history, uh, the K's have been kept low. Um, you know, they're definitely a sought after car. They're certainly going to make, not going to make them anymore. Are no, they? they're so, not. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think mm. it's worth mentioning that Mark Bear, who was a product planner at FPV, got the idea for the raccoon-like headlights raccoon from yeah. the yeah. Audi R8 yeah. when yeah. it was yeah. a concept yeah. car. You know, for me, the FG is probably one of the nicest, mm. you know, Ford's Falcons that came out, and and I think it's it stood the you know the test of time as well. Uh, Christoph, what about the um, the GTF? Mm. Yeah, definitely. In what, one of the more special models they brought out and, and definitely collectible amongst the Ford collectors. So. Yeah, 351 kilowatts, That's classic right. number. Classic yeah. number, and, and I think that was a really great marketing ploy on that one. Really and it's, was. And, and it worked. And, and the hero models in uh, FGX would be XR6 Sprint and XR8 yep. Sprint. They yeah, had more, so, yeah. more grunt yep. than the base models. And they, they, did, they, yeah. they sold out. Isn't it amazing that they oh, sold yeah. out so yeah. quickly yeah, indeed. when the Falcon was, you know, was dead in the water? Dead yeah. row, yeah. 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 Look, I think to, I think towards the end of the production now we did see you know a lot of passionate Ford enthusiasts mm -hmm. really get into the marketplace and wanted to have part of that history. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Thank very you very good. much for joining us today, no Christoph. Problem, and remember, you can find all the latest auction updates on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like your own competition image of the FG and FGX Falcon, visit Autopix, Australia's largest motorsport photo archive. You know, we've often reflected on the, on the death of Falcon uh, FG, FGX. It was, it was death by a thousand cuts if you look at them, and you can't mention them all here, but there were key changes, loss of fair lane, uh, the loss of the wagon, the massive growth in user-chooser salary sacrificing lease arrangements. It just went on and on and on. There was just no way as that ra range got smaller and smaller, you could defend c keeping it going. The model for the viable Australian car industry was a 20th century model, mm. where you had the one basic car and you had luxury variants, utes, wagons and all that yep. thing, and even the coupe mm. versions at some time. And that just simply didn't apply in mm. the 21st century. Yeah. Yeah, and, and even even the race halo, it was more like win on Sunday, forgotten on Monday, <laughs> really, wasn't it? Well, it really was, and that's the, the way the V8 supercar racing you know, took the models down that path. I think uh, Ford and Holden's involvement was more um, sponsoring it from a halo for the brand as yes. opposed to specific models. Indeed. I think that was proven with both uh, Falcon and Commodore. I think it was. Mm. Well, we hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the final Falcon the FG and FGX, and we'll catch you next time on Shannon's Club TV.